Good morning, everyone. Hopefully, uh, we are live and hopefully everyone can hear me and see me. That will be a great start. Um, if you can't, let me know in the comments and I will do my best to try and fix something. Uh, but as soon as I start seeing some comments saying that we're uh, all good to go, I'll maybe start with today's video. A bit different than normal, uh, so you have to bear with me. A bit of an ad lib. Um, I was meant to be building this the LX314, which is quite a nice laser cut kit, but this didn't arrive till about 10 minutes ago. So <laughs> I didn't have time to set up my build station for that. So we're doing a bit of an ad lib thing today. Uh, just looking through the comments. Yeah, we've got plenty of comments saying loud and clear. So awesome. Well, good morning, everyone. Hope we're all well and doing good. Um, like I said, today's video is going to be a bit different. I'm going to do a live Q&A. So if you've got any questions for me, modelling in general, about the Royal Modellers Club, do feel free to ask me. This is time to ask. Um, uh, and I'll answer all questions that I can. And we're also going to be doing a little tour of the Royal Modellers Club. So I'm going to show you some features that um, you might not know about, how to download texture sheets, um, how to access the first class section, um, how to access the free user guides um, for all users as well. So it's going to have a look at all the ins and outs of the club, um, making sure everyone knows what's what, what's available, and how you can utilize it to the best of your ability and how to get the most out of it. Because at the end of the day, it is there for you to get the um, to get the most out of what you want. Um, so looking through the comments, we've got 50 people watching. That's great. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all well. We've got uh, John Wenham, uh, Martin Green, good morning, good morning Digger, good morning Martin from Portugal. Uh, I think I saw we've got Digger, Rachel, David Yates, Kev Miller, Tom Betty, um, morning Jed, and I think I saw we have uh, Dave Gilmore on it. Yep, morning Tinsley, morning Dave. So, I hope everyone's doing alright and we'll uh, crack on. So like I say, I've got put an Instagram post out yesterday and a post out on the club asking for questions, if you've got any questions to ask me. I've got a couple of them, uh, so I will probably answer them as sort of like a, an interval, a midsection. Um, so if you've got any more questions, please feel free to ask. Um, interesting, I've just had the uh, Backman Winter announcement on um, when I was setting up, and we did some interesting double gauge products. What's even more interesting is they're doing the uh, 009 double fairly um, from the Fusty Frog Railway, um, which looks really impressive. It, they've really, really pulled all the stops out on that one. Um, so I do recommend once you finished here, go and watch the Backman Winter Update video because um, they've, they've done some quite impressive um, announcements for 2021, for the winter of 2021. Nothing that really interests me, unfortunately. Um, they're doing a couple of new 90s, but none in DB or EWS, so none for my layout. Um, but they, they're quite interesting, they look good, so I recommend once you finished here, we'll go check them out. In fact, actually, since I've got a screen share, I might show you live, if I can, and we'll talk through this a bit. Um, but yeah, like I say, we're going to be doing a tour of the Rare Modelers Club today, so I will have uh, just one second to try and get this sorted. Yeah, so I think when I click this button, we'll go over to the Rare Modelers Club on here, um, and I'll be able to talk to you through everything. So hopefully this works, and hopefully you can still hear me. So I really hope you can hear me when I'm still talking. Um, I've kind of got a bit of an improv situation going on. And it's sort of a bit, um, what do you call it, uh, thrown together. I don't, I'm not sure if it's going to work or not, but hopefully it does. Uh, morning, Craig Mason. Uh, morning, Nick Forts. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, morning, David. Morning, uh, David Chandler, Leslie. And good morning, Edward. Hope everyone is having a great week. Right, so we're in the Railway Modelers Club now. This is what you should see when you open it up on your desktop. Uh, as you can see, we've got a couple of posts by Josh and Ian here. This is your main activity feed. This is all of this is all content from all groups compiled into one place. This is like your Facebook home feed. This is everything that you ever ever post on the club. It will appear here. So we just have a quick look down, we've got Ian's post-it theme, which today, I've not actually seen this yet, Loco's in different light, which is quite interesting. So if you would have a photo that you want to share, which involves uh, locomotives in a different light, so uh, dawn to dusk maybe, um, or like Ian's posted here with the uh, NRM experience at night, 
then you would obviously post it in the club room and you'd use the hashtag post it to your post is tagged in that section um, and then we'll come up as a post-it theme and then one day we might compile all the different best of post-its into like a big compilation thing um, that could make for quite an interesting uh, desktop calendar or physical calendar even or even a little um, sort of catalogue of photos so that'll be quite interesting one day so if you just use the hashtag post-it that makes everything clearer to find um, you can see we've got a couple more posts we've got uh, Michael Sutton's Loving D57 uh, so like I say, this is your main feed. This is all posts coming together into one feed. Um, this is like, so like I say, it's like your main Facebook feed. If you wanted um, only things that were posted in buy and sell, for example, you'd click on buy and sell. And here you see all posts that are only put on buying and selling. So these are like your specific Facebook groups. These are your... Um, your groups that are more to do with hobbies rather than general purpose, except obviously everything's to do with this hobby. Um, but this is just buying and selling, for example. Um, as you can see here, this is where I would type to text you some to add, add something into the uh, to the post. You can see here at the top, I'm pointing. You can see <laughs> I'll point my mouse instead. You can see here it says buy, sell, and wanted. If you wanted to post that in a different group, or you think, oh. I'm in the wrong group you click on that and then you can view all groups that you're a part of uh, and then select the one you want to post it off so if i i wanted to post in railway photography i would just click that and it's going into railway photography now a bit of a weird quirk on this one as you can see we're posting in railway photography but for some reason we're still in buy sell and wanted just a little niggle little quirk of our uh, software there so just make sure that you're aware that you could be posting in the wrong group sometimes it does happen i do it all the time um but yeah as you can see at the top then you've got all the groups so you've got buy and sell club room first class lounge i'll have a quick look at the first class lounge um a little bit behind the scenes uh, for what um you get if you're a first class member so the first class lounge is basically um an activity feed exclusive for first class members um we post things in here, just as it needs a cover photo. A lot of these groups need cover photos. For some reason, that was a feature we only unlocked a couple of weeks ago, so I need to go through and add all them. Um, but yeah, the First Class Lounge is basically an exclusive uh, feed for First Class members where we post exclusive behind the scenes content. Um, so Justin might post the occasional update video from uh, HQ talking about his new products um, or whatever he's doing at the moment in time. Um, we also post uh, discount codes for new kits. Uh, for example, when Justin announces uh, a new kit like the bandstand, he will put in a code in the first class lounge that will give first class members, um, I believe it's 10% off for the first week of any new kits, um, which is quite that good of a deal. That's quite, quite a good deal, to be fair, um, especially when you consider you know 10% off Fifty pound dollars, five pound, and all that's nearly your first class membership made back saved already. Um, so it's quite a good deal. Um, but also, it's a place for posting personal stuff. It's 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 your group. At the end of the day, you use it for what you want to use it for. So if you wanted to post stuff exclusively in the first class lounge, as you can see, some people here have uh, Moonrake Pete. He's a quite an active member in the first class side of things, uh, and that's the first class lounge. Uh, like I say, it's a first class hangout area where we post discount codes and other um, exclusive content. Uh, so if we head back to the main page. As you can see here, we've got loads of groups for anything and everything you might want. Hopefully, you can see some of the things we have here. We've got road transport, DCC, DC, weathering and painting. And now we come on to the special interest groups. Um, these are user requested um, and they are basically private groups for your modeling or your interest. So it has to be for your modeling. They could be for um, something you want to see. So if you wanted to see a special interest group for the Festiniog Railway, for example, you could request one at your will. Um, and I'll talk, get onto the house in that earlier. As you can see here, we've got a couple of special interest groups created by you, members of the group, 
uh, or sorry, I should say requested for, I create them. Um, and they're your personal groups are posting your personal stuff. So I've just jumped onto Orchard Road, which is a very popular exhibition layout um, created by a club member, Mud Magnet. Um, he's posting a couple of his posts of his layout. Um, this just makes it easy to find if you wanted to follow someone particular, if you wanted to follow their modeling exactly and not everyone else's, you want to just find what they were doing. This would be how you do it. So you'd go onto their special interest group um, and you've got, um, like, as you can see, a quick clear cut digest of all their posts. And I, I'm, I'm only seeing posts from Wood Magnet on Orchard Road here. So if you want one of these, you can do so by emailing me. So I'll copy a hay fever there, I'm a bit sniffly. Um, yeah, so if you want a special interest group for your model railway, or if you want one for a particular interest, I think we're about to sneeze. Hopefully not, that'll be quite unpleasant for you. <laughs> anyway, I sold you on. So if you wanted a special interest group, all you have to do is email me, dylan at scalemodelscenery.co.uk, um, with a couple of photos, uh, a couple sent sentences of descriptive text, um, and then obviously a name. Um, and then I will create the group for you and I'll make you an admin so you can post in there. You can also let us know if you want other people to be able to post or just yourself. Um, and there are quite a few. So in fact, if we take a look, we're jumping into the through line menu here. Uh, and we're going over to special interest groups. <coughs> we'll do it this way. We'll come back to this and we'll go into more detail about what else is here. Jump into members layouts. And here you, you'll be able to see all groups for that members have created um, that they may want for their personal layout. So if some of these interest you, you know, if you particularly like the work of Chandwell, I think everyone does, or Made Upton, <coughs> sorry, uh, or Lakeside Parkway, or you know, Jedbury, any or Brockholm, any of these groups you can join yourself and it will, like I say, allow you to filter exclusively for their content and watch what they're doing exactly, um, rather than everyone else's, you just get their content uh, when you view their group. Um, so anyone can create one, like I say, all you have to do is email me, dylan at scalemodelsoon.co.uk, and I will create one for you. Um, there's mine, shameless plug, Kingfisher Models. I'll be getting more active on that very, very shortly. But there's, you know, as you can see, there's loads that just keep going. Um, he, he says as they stop. <laughs> um, so these are, like I said, really great for keeping everything you want exclusively in one place. Um, makes it easy to find, makes it easier to follow people. It's just an all around good thing for people to do to get involved within their particular groups. Um, I wonder if Josh, Josh is watching. I wonder if he recognizes that. So in also in special interest groups, you don't have ju just have members layouts, you do have other posts as well. And um, we've got groups for every sort of category or the main categories for modeling. So as you can see, we've got the main three, main, main three gauges, uh, N, double O and O. Uh, we've got one for modern image, we've got one for uh, different regions. Um, we've also got one for model shops where you can follow certain model shops that are part of the group. Um, railway photography, micro layouts, I don't need to list all of these. You can see how many there is pretty much one for everything. Uh, Timber Surface saying uh, feedback just being on the site and the content flashes off every second. Uh, I am not sure what's happening there. That's the first one on me. Um, I've not heard about that, but if you, I'll have a look. If that, if that persists, let me know and I'll have a look. Um, we've also got one for scale model scene with feedback. Um, Quite a lot of people posting here. Um, love the LX314, but could you do it with a, a this? Or um, did you know that the instructions are labeled wrong on this kit? Or can you do this? This is a post for posting in that. Uh, this is to do everything with scale model scenery kits. Um, as you can see, we've got a couple of posts in here of people um, commenting on the builds they've done. So we've got Diggers uh, LX89. I want to say, or well, it might be a 410. I should know because that's my kit. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is a group for scale model summary feedback. And if any suggestions you have about kits in particular or any up, up and coming ones you want to see, 
so you can join them, like I say, by viewing special interest groups from the drop down menu on the right hand side of your screen. In fact, while we're here, let's jump onto free stuff. Now, this is acts open to everyone. Uh, everyone can view, so you don't have to be a first class member to view this. Um, so you should be able to view 2021 catalog. I'll go click on it because it'll open up and it's quite a big file. Uh, how to guides and articles. Now this does need reorganizing, it does look a bit messy and unclear because we've had a lot to it, so it, it does need redoing. Um, but it'll st the principles stay the same. Uh, you've got all the top tips, volumes that you can view. Uh, you've got a couple of articles, so we've got um, Josh's Tonic Star Falling article here. We've got one I've done on adding sound to the Hornby A2s. Um, we've got one for uh, modeling crash damaged vehicles, painting boats and jetties. Um, I've also got Josh's article on Pine and Sprog, which isn't uh, a meal, that is a DTC control system. Uh, so we've still got one person, an extra person saying everything is blurred. Um, is that on the live stream itself or is that on the website? Um, if it's on the live stream, I don't think there's much I can do about that. It's probably to do with my internet connection or rather poor internet connection, should I say. Um, but hopefully, that will come and go if it is on the live stream rather than the actual site. Uh, so we've also got the scale converter. This is a really handy tool. Um, so if you had a set of drawings in 164 scale and you wanted to convert them into 176, you could do that here. Um, you could, this, this is quite a versatile tool if you wanted to find out how long uh, 240 foot is in well, one to one scale you could find out how big that is in 176. So it's quite a useful tool. Um, we've also got a folder on building a model railway from start to finish. That is not quite, as you can see, there's only two parts in there. It doesn't, you can't build a model railway in two parts, um, but hopefully I plan to get more on that done uh, later on. Uh, we've also got the scale model scenery build guide, which is a very, very useful tool, I must say. We obviously we provide instructions of all the kits we do, but the build guides are when myself and Ian and Justin just take the time to go through the kits, build them and photograph them at every stage and document everything we're doing in a lot more detail than what can be fit on the instructions. And we then upload them to this to the club here and then you can download them and read through them at your own leisure. So if you're having difficulties building the um, LX001, we haven't got the LX one, LX below seven, for example, which is the chain link security fence. If you weren't quite sure on how to do something, we've done an article all about the LX 007 on how to build it, um, which goes into much, as you can see, that's the instructions you get with the kit, but this is a 20 odd page document taking you through how to do it. So it's much more in depth than the instructions, much more personal, um, it's what we've done, it's what we've found and we've built it. Um, we're not taking a manufacturer's point of view, we're taking a customer point of view on these. It's us building it and showing you what we found doing it, what issues we could have come across and the solutions we also came across. So it's well worth checking out. Um, they were split up nicely into categories. So if you had an LX82, you would know it'd be in the LX001 to LX99 folder. Um, and so on. There's one for quite a lot of these kits and eventually we'll be doing them for every kit is the plan. Um, but that is quite a big project. So you have to bear with us that not everyone might be done. But if there is one in particular that you're after, uh, we don't do. Um, then I recommend just letting us know that you're after one um, and we'll do it for you. We've got, you know, obviously we've got access to all the kits in the range so we can quite easily um, do you a build guide on a particular kit if there's one that's missing that you're after. So really useful tool, really recommend you check that out. Um, it's great for getting to know all the kits in the range and it's great for learning new details that you might have missed previously. So next I think we will have a look at uh, the interactive map. That's quite a cool feature if I don't say so myself. It took me a while to do this. Um, took a lot of effort, but in theory, this is a map of every um, railway related attraction in the country and abroad as well, um, but particularly the country. 
So if you're on holiday in, let's go for Norfolk, <coughs> excuse me, let's have a look at what's kicking around in Norfolk. Uh, if I just scroll up, so as you can see here, let's say you're on holiday in Bristol or Holt or somewhere like that, you can see that, oh, hang on, there's one of these uh, heritage railways. There are a couple of heritage railways up on the north coast that might be nice to check out. It's a couple in the centre and there's a couple of shops dotted around. That could be a nice day out. We'll go for them one of day. Uh, good morning, Richard from New Junction. Hope you are well. I uh, hope everything is well at your end of the neck of the woods. So unless you're on holiday in Dorsetshire, in Weymouth, you can zoom in, have a look. Think, oh, there's a preserved railway in Yeovil, Templecombe, uh, is that Shillingstone, all the places like that. And then you might think that'd be a nice place to go out. Uh, and that's done for the entire country. Uh, we've got model shops, heritage railways, uh, model railway clubs, and museums on there. There's loads and loads, as you can see, there's hundreds of uh, places you can visit, uh, all documented on this map. So it's a really useful tool. If you're at a loose end, don't know where to go one day, um, visiting a new area, it's a really useful tool for getting to know what's about and what's in the area. So I really recommend you look at that. It's really useful. Right, let's move on to, uh, let's actually, let's look in the first class section. So normally, um, if you're a standard class member, you won't be able to particularly view this. You'll be able to get this far, I think. Um, but every time you try to click on one of these, um, you'll be hit with a, uh, a wall that won't let you through unless you're a first class member. But I'm just gonna let you know what's on the other side of that wall and what you could be uh, missing out on. Uh, which you might find interesting. So first off, we'll go head over to the how to's guides and articles. Like I said, these are very similar to the ones that I was showing you earlier, the build guides, um, but they're more akin to everything in the modeling world rather than just scalable scenery products. Uh, so as you can see, we've got one for local customization. Um, this includes articles that Ian's done about uh, Cab lighting in the HST, the Hornby HST, is quite a downfall from that model. Um, actually, that was quite a few downfalls in that model. This is one of them. Um, and it just takes you through what you can do to improve the Hornby HST lighting situation. So it's really useful, that one. Really good. If you, I've got a couple of HSTs myself, and it just improves them a bit. Um, we've got a good for scenery, ballasting, painting, weathering. Um, I can move on to electronics as well. We've got loads of articles covering everything pretty much in the world of electronics um so if you're struggling on uh diode matrix root selection whatever that is <laughs> you can view this and, and it will give you a comprehensive guide on uh, diode matrix root selection which ian has written for everyone to view um and it's really simple he's done it in really down-to-earth terms um, and there's one of these for pretty much every um, of possible model railway electronics or DCC or line side detailing. You know, there's something for everything here, um, which is absolutely great. It's a really comprehensive guide. And there's thousands and thousands of pages between all of these articles on how to do things. So it's, like, like I say, a great guide for getting to know how to do particular jobs on the model railway. So if we look at the download section now, so again, this is first class uh, section. So a little bit of sneak peek of the, um, what what you could have won in uh, game show terms. So let's look at download and print kits. So one key feature about the Rare Modelers Club is that you can actually download and print off nearly a thousand kits and texture sheets, um, which you can print off at home at will. You can print off, you can download a brick texture sheet and print it off a million times at home. Um, all for the same monthly price of £6.99, which is an absolutely amazing deal if you're doing a huge or a larger project and need lots of texture sheets. Um, so let's have a look at double gauge texture sheets, since I'm talking about it now. Nice to split up into the platforms, or you can see what you can have here. So let's look at bricks, for example. I love my brick. Um, so if you were building a... Uh, a large garden wall or a large retaining wall in double over gauge, you could quite happily join the club, download the TX108 old red brick 
texture sheet and then print it off as many times as you want to then create that wall. Um, and it's the same for all of these uh, bricks. We do have more to come as well, I do believe. Um, or if stone wall was more your thing, you've got all of these that you can download. And these are all the same for N, double O and O gauge. And of course, if you know how to resize pages on your printer, you can actually resize these to any scale you would like. Um, so it's not just O, double O and N that's available. Um, we do have ones for every, we have a possibility for every uh, scale. Um, but if you're building a platform as well, we don't have two at the moment, we should have more. Um, I need to download some more and put them on. Um, but we have texture sheets for that. So if you're building a platform, we can easily help you get through that uh, with the first class download section. Uh, Nuts for, uh, for Ian is saying, uh, you need a top flight printer to do a sheets just as though. Um, I don't think you need the best. Um, obviously, the better the printer, the better quality of texture sheets will be. Um, but you can print stuff out on your standard printers. Um, you don't have to have the best in the world to be able to print these out, um, but obviously it does improve the quality. Um, Taze is asking, is the club free to join? Um, the club is free to join, uh, but the first class section, which we're showing now, um, uh, costs £6.99 a month or £59.99 a year. Um, and that gives you access to all of these exclusive downloads, exclusive um, download articles as well, uh, texture sheets, um, as well as the how-to guides. Um, and also exclusive club disc um, shop discounts for scale model scenery on new products, um, which is obviously a great bonus to have. Um, but we don't just do very stuff. We also do quite a lot for diecasts and model aircraft, as you can see. Um, we've got stuff for 172 scale aircraft, 1 to 144, 1700. The list goes on and on. There's so much for you to explore here. We do lots of it, pretty much everything. This is not just railway stuff we do, it's texture sheets for nearly all forms of modeling. So it's a great resource to have, um, especially we do things like uh, carrier flight decks. Um, not too sure where they would be. I think they're on one seven hundred carrier flight decks. Nope. So I'm not a, um, an aircraft modeler, so I wouldn't know. Here we go, yeah. So we do things like carrier flight decks uh taxiways landing plimps all that sort of thing for your aircraft modeling which is if you if you do a bit of airfix building download one of these off print them off plonk your model on there and you've got a sort of an instant diorama um we also do one where it's uh speed warped in a way um i'm not sure where that would be i want to find it now um we do like a speed warped one so it looks like your plane is actually landing or taking off it's actually it looks really cool um not sure which folder that's in though so i'll leave it for now and um, we'll move on to one seven second scale and buildings we we don't just do texture sheets we also do a couple of buildings that you can download and build at home we do have a couple of people that um post them in the club uh, for example we do aircraft control tower uh, we do hangers you can see what we do. It's quite a lot for the one seven second modeling community. And of course, like I say, you can resize your 20 scale you want. That's another great feature. So if we go back into, nope, go back one more to double and show you double a gauge um, kits you can download. So like I say, we also do the kits for uh, railways as well. Here we go, kits. So as you can see, we do quite a lot of kits as well. Uh, let's jump into buildings, let's see what we can get. There's quite a, a lot here that you can download. Um, and you can act, get unlimited access to all of this for six five nine more, which is quite a good deal. Especially if you like just evening modeling, doing some modeling in the evening, these are great for those sort of projects, just having a go, doing a bit each night. And then within a week you'll have, yeah, a low relief industrial unit for your model railway for practically nothing. And you can see the list goes on and on. There's loads and loads and loads that you can download here. And you can resize them to any scale you want, which is perfect if you're doing a force perspective. Uh, so you can shrink kits 
by 5%. So if you're putting them in, putting them further away, it makes them look like they're even further away. Um, or you could be the great for kit bashing as well, because since you can download them and print them off as many times as you want, uh, you can cut and splice and join them together just as you wish. In fact, someone sent us a message um, the other day and they showed us photos of the KX030, I think it is, which is the 1930s lower leaf factory. Um, and they had actually built one and then built another, but was sort of a quarter of the width. And it made it look like that there was another building sort of sideways on next to this one. And it looked really good while they did. Um, we were really impressed with that. In fact, I'll try and see if we can post some photos of that in the club in the next coming days. But it just shows that with the downloads, you can print off and kit bash and build them to your heart's content. There's no limitation to how much you can do which is absolutely an amazing feature. And all of this is available in double O, N, O gauge and any scale you want when you resize it at home. So let's move on to eBooks. This is a new feature. Many of you may be aware that Ian has a uh, micro layout that he's built for the club, for the company. Um, and he documented that every step of the way. Um, it's called layout in the box. Now. This is a, I think it's 500 page article um, going through how to build his, how he, how Ian built his club layout, which used the BB-17 baseboard from start to finish. And every single step is documented. Um, it might take a while for it to load on here because I'm obviously using the internet to stream as well as view this massive 400, 500 page article. So it could take a while to load. In fact, I might be able to get it to load since I'm doing this. Um, well, you have to believe me, it's there. <laughs> it's there for you to check out and download um, or just view it in your browser if you'd wish. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to let me do it, which is a shame. But it's a huge comprehensive article on building an entire model rally from start to finish, going through every single aspect. So if you're wanting to know how to do this very particular section, or you're just a little bit stuck on this exact part of modern railway. Ian's probably already covered it um, in this article. Um, so it's a great resource if you're wanting to improve your skills slightly or learn a different technique. Chances are it's covered in there, which is absolutely incredible. So I think we'll take a break from looking at the club now. I'll just jump back onto our stream. I'll just remove that so we can see me a bit better. I'll answer some questions once I've just had a little swig. Excuse me. Okay, so and a couple of questions uh, that I was asked on Instagram uh, and the club last night. Um, if you've got any more, feel free to add them to the chat. Uh, now, I was quite, I thought I've been quite clever in writing the questions down, but I forgot to write down the names of the people who asked the questions, so I have no idea who's asked the questions, but I've got the questions. Um, someone asked me what's the best way to add detail um, to a new locomotive. In fact, I'll bring this back up again. And hopefully I'll be able to show you that. In fact, if we head over to um, free stuff, so this is open for everyone to access, uh, not just first class members, head over to building a model railway from start to finish, and preparing a loco. If this loads, there we go. This is an article that I've written fairly recently and it explains the whole process of adding detailing parts, improving aspects of a loco and getting them layout ready. Um, as you can see, I go through everything from pickups to back to back gauges, to painting fire lines, adding coal, pre-link couplings. It's the whole shebang. Um, so the best way to add detail to your locomotive is probably covered in this article. Um, and this is available for everyone to view. You don't need to be a first class member. You can just jump on the club. Like I say, it was in free stuff on the drop down menu, building a model where we start to finish, preparing a loco. All the answers should be in there. If not, let me know. Um, I'll have a look at doing that in a bit more comprehensive detail. Um, so next question is, uh, someone asked how the crossing gate's coming along. Um, I believe they're in the queue waiting to do um, what do you call it? Yeah, they're in the prototype queue. 
I think. Um, I think the design work has been done, and I think they're just waiting to be cut, um, but that is quite a lengthy process. There's a lot waiting to be cut, um, so we'll have to see on that one. Um, but we should be ready, it should be nearly ready. Um, but as for a specific time frame, I don't know on that one, unfortunately. Um, someone asked me what's my personal favourite model. Got to be the Hornby A4, got to be. It's just such a an iconic model is relatively cheap it's not that expensive you can pick them up for about 90 quid uh, and they are pretty good accurate representations of the a4 so it will be that one for me um someone asked me an interesting question that i've never been asked before what's my favorite br class 44 um uh, 47 sorry what's my favorite livery on a class 47 now i think that would probably be Let's have a look now. I think it's a Yin City Class 47. In, yeah, in this sort of way. I'm not too sure what the exact term is. I think it might be executive, um, but it, I think it's probably this sort of swallow executive looking sort of livery. Or I don't know if it exists, but I do like regional railways. Here we go. If that livery exists in real life, that might be a repaint. Um, but I do like regional railways. That's one of my favourite liveries. That isn't um, steam. <laughs> so hopefully that answers that question. And someone else asked me, what's the best model of 2021? Um, now these came out in 2020, or they were announced in 2020, but they were, um, they actually arrived in 2021. But I would say the best model, if you're talking most accurate, most correct, and um, most accurately portrayed. Apart from the fact it's narrow gauge, because obviously it's double gauge, that would be the Hornby A2s. They are by far the most pipe for pipe accurate model out there. Um, autonomously, autonomously correct, I suppose you would call them. Um, so that's my, that's what I would say the best model 2021 is. Obviously they were not the best in terms of functionality. Um, you know, obviously they haven't got lights, they haven't got a servo pantograph or anything like that because they're steam locomotives. Um, if that's if you know, that's the the uh, question question you're asking, I would probably say it's probably the Backman Class Ninety, if you can class that as a 2021 model, um, or something like the uh, KR models GT3. That's probably got more functionality, um, but in my opinion, the best model is the best model which is most accurately portrayed and for me that is the Hornby A2, the A22 and the A23. Um, so that's the questions I have pre-written down done. I'll just flick through the comments and then see if there's any questions I can answer. Uh, so Ian Perrin is saying to add, to add Venuses to the feature, do we email yourself or do we add ourselves? Uh, I'm not too sure what you mean by Venuses. Um, that's a new one on me. Uh, so yeah, not too sure on that. <laughs> uh, looking through, uh, I don't think there's any more questions. One just popped up from Dak Dak. Uh, Backman and Hornby are both due to release the new 9F models. Will you get either or both? Um, well, I'm built, the layout I'm about to start building is a 15 by 2 foot. Uh, model railway um, sets on a branch line near York, so I'm using a lot of the York allocations um, as my locomotive roster fleet. Um, but I, I, th I don't think the line is big enough for 9Fs. Um, they're quite a BC locomotive, so I don't think so. I might get one um, since I'm also building stock to build a East Coast main line layout. So I've also got you know the A3s, the A4s. So I might get one of the Hornby 9Fs, um, simply because I have a bit more trust in Hornby's to Kettle's justice. Backman ones can be a little bit hit and miss, a little bit touchy. Um, I always prefer the Hornby ones. Having said that, I'm looking forward to the Backman V2. Um, but yeah, so I'll probably get one, um, but it's not at the top of my priority list. Um, weirdly, the Hornby Class 91 is at the top of my priority list, which is never 
my it's not my cup it's not my layout at all but i just love the 91 so much i've got to have one ah so ian's just clarified that by venus he means uh additional railways that he wants adding to the uh list uh do you mean the special interest group or the map there um a couple of people are saying the map if it's the map um if you i believe you have to add me uh, ask me to add them. I don't think you can do that yourself. I think you have to be uh, added as an editor. Um, so if you wanted to want something adding, just send me an email, uh, dylan at scalemodelscenery.co.uk um, and I will add that for you. Um, if it's a special interest group, then you've definitely got to ask me to do that. Um, again, just email me two photos, um, descriptive text, and then the name of your group, and I'll add that up for you. And then if I've got any questions, I'll ask you them back um so yeah if it's the map just email email me that's going to be the best blanket question blanket answer even i don't know if you can add them to the map yourself so just email me dylan at scale model scene code at uk and i'll get them done for you uh so i think that is probably about everything just sorry i forgot to uh, go back to the stream there we go um what I will say is the old club, the old Railway Modelers Club, is being taken down soon. I don't know when soon is. I don't know um, if it could be next week, it could be next year, I don't know. But it is, it is coming down. So if you're still a, a member of the old Railway Modelers Club that does not look like this, um, then you'll need to transfer over to the new club or you risk losing your account and your details. Um, if you are a first class member on the old club and you have, you're not sure what's happening to your loyalty points, uh, your loyalty points are being converted into scale model scenery discount points. Um, so you, if you haven't had them in, added to your scale model scenery account, send us a message, me or Ian, or send the ticket system a message and we'll get that sorted for you. But yeah, the old club's coming down soon. so. You need to get on to the new club if you're not already. Um, that, that's saying, shame on the 9F, would like to see you weather one. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not ruling it out that I'm not going to get one. Um, it's just that they're not, they're probably a little bit too big for my layout. I think WDs, dub Ds, um, I, I kind of prefer them anyway. They're a little bit smaller. Um, I think they have a slightly lower route availability, or is it slightly higher route availability? Never got that one around my head. <laughs> um, so I'll probably get, I'll probably prefer to get a 9 double D instead of a 9F. But since the 9 is a much newer model and much better model, I probably might get a 9F at some point. Um, especially if the layout um, progresses and evolves into a slightly bigger layout. Um, then I've got room to justify a 9F, I might. And especially since it's based near York, it, there is a possibility that 9Fs would have worked this line. Um, so, like I say, it's not top of my priority list, but I might get one eventually. Um, they are quite nice models. Uh, so yeah, I think that's probably about everything. I'm um, just looking at the club now. I don't think, I don't think I've missed much. Uh, obviously, there's a load of groups I've not been in. Um, I've not looked at rail, rail, railway photography, newsletters, members gallery, micro layouts or news or anything like that there for you to explore. Um, they're quite self-explanatory, they're just groups for, for particular individual items and topics. Uh, but what, yeah, thank you Tony for reminding me on the club there. I will just go over the different um, programs we have available in the club. Um, we have one called Verified Member, which is the first step up from uh, Standard Member. That is where you see this green tick. Hopefully you can see that if I zoom in. Can I zoom in? Yep. Oh, I feel like I've zoomed in too far and broken it. <laughs> there we go. That little green tick. Come on now. Behave. That green tick there. That means the member is a verified member. There's a couple of um, criteria you need to meet to become verified. Um, I'm not going over all of them because it might give too much away of how we run the club, but basically you need a profile photo, 
and you need to be regularly active um, and we need to sort of recognize that you're active as well um, so it's, it's, re it's really easy to become verified if you're if that's something you're interested in um, best thing to do is just get a profile photo in and just keep posting keep commenting keep liking um, and that will eventually earn you the verified tick um, and then one step above that there's something we've just introduced we have I think we've only got about 10 at the moment is the top contributors um, which displays this banner across your name when you post in the club uh, if I just zoom out again so it makes it easier to see that's one too many there we go now the top contributors are only available to the verified members so you've got to be a verified member first but they it's like a next level up um, and the top contributors are more they're not they're not moderators of the group um, but they're sort of getting to be that way they're they're really grounded members of the club they're really um they post consistently great quality and they're just it's, a, it's our way of showing that these members know their stuff and these members are great people to ask for advice um well i'll just backtrack a bit to the verified members if you're a verified member that allows you to live stream in the club as well so if that's something you're inter interested in you can do that if you're a verified member um and the top contributor obviously gives you that nice banner over the top um what you also something i've just realized that i've forgotten to talk about it's not quite finished yet but we do have a track plan archive um now this is something that like i say isn't finished yet um we've got a lot of blanks because we need to fill in some of the layouts um but if you've got any track plans that you want to i suppose donate um you can do so again in touch with me um and we'll add them to the archive as you can see we've got a couple here we've got a nice one from sam hill for a three by one foot model railway um these are super if you're wanting the idea is eventually if you're wanting to build a new layout and not sure what you want to put into the group um so what you're wanting to build hopefully you'll be able to view this and you'll be able to see all of the um track plans we have available and hopefully one or two of them might inspire you and give you some ideas so this is a nice little shunting layout by sam uh, we've got a couple in here we've got one by dave james Again, three by one foot double O gauge. It's quite a nice little idea. Yes, hopefully it gives people inspiration um, to then build their layout. We've got a couple in the larger scales as well. Sorry, larger sizes, not larger scales. Um, we've got a four by 12 foot one here, which is Sam Hills. This is actually a really interesting layout. Um, as you can see, I believe this is storage in the purple. Green is scenic and the blue is a return loop as you can see it actually looks like quite an interesting layout um i think i'll just leave that on screen for a minute so you can have a look at it um quite an interesting little terminus layout that also allows you to sort of run trains from the terminus back into the terminus as well as having the option of going straight back to the middle yard so quite an interesting layout um david's asking uh how you're doing on your layouts um i'm not unfortunately <laughs> Um, my baseboards are still to arrive from Tim Horn, but I'm expecting them any day from Friday. So don't worry, as soon as I get them, oh, you'll be inundated with posts on that in the club. There's, there'll be loads, <laughs> I'll be posting loads about that. So I'm really excited for it. So it's not at the moment, I haven't got it yet, but it will be soon, one day, um, with me, and then I'll be cracking on with it. In fact, I should be getting a delivery of track for the layout uh, the next couple of days um, and then all I need to order then is cork and some paint to paint the baseboards and then I have everything to build a full layout so no restrictions we feel to go for it so I'm looking forward to that one anyway I think you've been bored to death of many enough already so I'll start wrapping it up uh, so one thing I will just say is I'll get that out yeah. I was meant to be building this today, but it arrived um, half an hour before I meant to start, um, which is quite annoying because I didn't get a chance to get ready to build that. So um, next week, next Wednesday, 10 a.m., I'll be building the LX314, which is a nice little industrial unit, as you can see. Um, Friday, we are launching a competition. We have quite a nice large competition our largest competition yet up and coming we've got a couple of good sponsors um 
I won't give too much away, but we've got uh, two big manufacturers sponsoring us um, and at least one large model shop sponsoring the event or donating prizes. So it's going to be quite a big event. It's going to be quite interesting and hopefully um, be a great opportunity for you to get involved, do some winter modeling and potentially win some amazing prizes. So we're really looking forward to that one. Um, Rachel, how is SIG request coming up via email? Brilliant. So that's Dylan at scalemodelscenery.co.uk. Send us an email to that and I'll get it done with you today, Rachel. Um, so yeah, I think that's about everything. Uh, Ed is saying, sorry I'm late. That's no worries at all. Um, you can watch all of these live streams back on YouTube. Um, our YouTube channel is Scale Model Scenery, I think it's called. Um, and you can watch all of these back um, after they've uploaded. So in the next half an hour, should be ready to watch. Uh, Barnabas Junction is saying, has a club been fixed regarding logging in on multiple devices? I never knew it was broken, to be fair. Um, I, Martin, I always use the club on at least two devices all day, and I've never really had an issue. Um, so I don't think it's our end that might be the issue there. If it is, um, let us know. Shoot me a message there, Jason. Um, you have me on Facebook, shoot me a message, uh, and I'm more than happy to help. Um, but no, I think at the moment I run the club on Safari and the app at the same time posting posts on both at the same time and it works fine for me um so i'm not too sure what's going on there like i say if it still persists let me know i'll do my best to help you out uh if you log on by pc you can't log on via the app um yeah there might be an issue on your end unfortunately because i it works for me fine i don't know if other people find the same but if i'm on the app um, it works just as fine on the desktop as well uh, so i'm not sure that like i say have another go Message me if you can't sort it out, I will look for you. Um, but yeah, so it's been nearly an hour. Um, hopefully everyone's found that interesting. If anyone's got any more questions, you know how to contact me. I've, you know, my email, and I've said it a couple of times now, Dylan, it's Game World Scenery. Um, add me on the Lone Mothers Club, you can send me a message directly there. Um, and if anyone's got any issues or questions, just let me know, I'll do my best to help you out. Um, that's what I'm here for. Or if you've got any modeling issues, um, like I say, just ask, and I'll do my best to help you out. I've got plenty of build guides that I can send you that might be of use. Um, so hopefully everyone's found that interesting. Uh, hopefully there's no more questions, like I say, so send me a message if you have any issues. Uh, David saying, we've often had four devices with where our model is working. Yeah, um, so I'm not sure what's happening there, Jason. Um, like I say, have another go, send me a message if it's still not working, I'll look into it for you. But yeah, I'll call that one for today. Thank you for joining everyone. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed it. Like I say, uh, Friday, I'll be going live again. So I'll see you all on Friday, hopefully, to announce this competition. Like I say, uh, at the moment, we've got three big sponsors lined up uh, with hopefully more to join us. So it's going to be a huge event, this one. We're looking forward to announcing it. So that's Friday, 5 p.m. on Instagram and the Vera Models Club. I'll be announcing that one. Um, if not, I will see you on Wednesday at 10 a.m. to build the LX314. Um, small industrial building. And then maybe, not the week after, because it's better half's birthday that week, but the week after that, I might be um, doing some detailing kits for this. So like the, uh, the shelving, workbenches, that sort of thing. And sort of turning this into a, from a building into a, a diorama if that makes sense so i hope everyone enjoyed that uh, like i say any questions shoot me an email shoot, shoot me a message you know how to contact me um or if not just post it on the club and i'll see it or post it on facebook and i'll see it um super i hope everyone has a good day and a good week and i'll catch you all on friday for this exciting competition which like i say is our biggest one yet and it's going to be huge sound a bit like donald trump there but no it'll be great we're looking forward to it so Good stuff. I'll speak to you on Friday. Cheers, everyone.